The views expressed are not necessarily those of KSCJ and Powell Broadcasting Company. This program is not intended to replace the advice of doctors or other clinical providers. Consult with your practitioner to ensure the proper course of action for you. Welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well on AM 1360 FM 94.9 KSCJ. This program is dedicated to your mental health wellness and brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency. Here's your host, Art Silva. Good morning, Siouxland, and welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well. This show is dedicated to your mental wellness and how you can help yourself navigate the daily highway of life. We hope to educate and motivate you to help improve your mental wellness environment. I'm Art Silva, and our show is brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency serving the Siouxland community. Joining me today is my colleague and co-host, Brenda Geisinger, Chief Operating Officer at Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. Uh, well, welcome to November. This is, yeah. this is the month of the turkey. <laughs> um, uh, and we celebrate the bird. And, uh, <laughs> and that runs right into Christmas. So we're celebrating the bird. Do you know that one time the turkey was considered for being the national bird of this uh, country? Yeah. Can you imagine that? I'm glad we got the eagle. <laughs> Woo, telling you, turkey. Anyhow, let's go. Brenda, would you please introduce today's guest and topic? Absolutely. So today we have with us, once again, Christy Spicer. She is a therapist at Family Services and also a registered play therapist. Um, Has been on the show numerous times and always offers great insight and uh, topics for us to discuss. So welcome, Christy. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Christy. And welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well. And how are you this morning? I got a new phrase. How you living? Pretty well. You know, I, I know this, you know, the weather maybe is turning for the fall, but man, the fall colors have been great this year. Okay. And we've also had some really nice weather too. We've been able to get out and spend more time outside this fall. And that's been really nice. So it's all good. So with that, um, uh, what's our, we got a great topic today. What's the topic we're going to get into? Today, we're going to talk about your feelings, identifying feelings, and the pros and cons of expressing those feelings. It sounds good. So let's get busy. Uh, Christy, uh, what are the benefits of knowing and sharing your feelings? Yeah. So, I I mean, I think the first step, and I just, you know, I think we all spend a lot of time going like, oh my gosh, I'm having a reaction, but what am I really feeling about it? Oftentimes, I think for myself, for my clients, and for other people I'm talking to, you know, they're having these reactions to things. So they're feeling something in their bodies a lot of times. And if we can take a minute and kind of go, oh, I am mad, or I'm sad, or I'm scared, or I'm worried, once we can name it, then we're in a better position to know what to do next. But until you can sort of identify it, then instead what we often are doing is we're snapping at people. We are doing things maybe out of character for ourselves, and that doesn't help any of our relationships. And so taking that time to stop, figure out what am I feeling, and sometimes even the why is important. So I'm really irritated about this thing. Why, why is that irritating me? If you can get there, sometimes that's really helpful too. Um, but then we have a better, we're in a better spot to do what we need to do next. You know, sometimes you find that when you get to the root cause of knowing your feelings, uh, it's the smallest things that trigger you. It doesn't have to be a major, but hey, atomic bomb went off, I'm cool. I mean, not really, but you know, I'm not going to worry <laughs> about it. But right. little things will drive me nuts. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think when you when you come out and you tell someone, they go, "Come on, get off of that. That's small. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is small, but it can be a, a very list of things that can just trigger you." Mm-hmm. So I think uh, no matter is too small if it's bothering someone. You get something pent up inside of you. So knowing them and identifying them is the first step. Mm-hmm. Uh, can a person are there consequences for sharing your feeling? Yeah, I mean, I think there definitely can be some consequences to sharing your feelings, especially depending on how you do it, right? So I was thinking about, you know, a situation where somebody, I, you know, I think I've used this analogy on the show before about dishes, right? You know, and so I'm annoyed that the dishes aren't done or the dishes weren't done this way or whatever. Little things. <laughs> the little things. Exactly. Dishes, I think, are little things, right? In the grand scheme of things. But it can send some folks into big emotions and big behavior reactions, right, over something little. But 
And also at the same time, while you might be the person who's having the big reaction about the dishes, if you also then are talking to your housemate or your partner, whoever you're living with, and you're then going right at them like, you didn't do this, this is bad, and you're expressing yourself that way, like that could cause a problem in your relationship and cause that person to have some emotions um, and have some reactions to that. And it might then be something you have to figure out how to repair because you didn't stop think about what am I feeling, why am I feeling it, and how do I want to handle it, and being planful and mindful about it. I'm not so along with uh, my co-host, Brenda Geisinger, and our guest from Family Services, uh, Christy Spicer, and you're listening to When Things Aren't Going Well, and we're talking today about feelings, understanding your feelings, knowing your feelings, and sharing your feelings. Uh, Can a person be too honest in sharing their feelings? I think we need to be careful that we don't hurt other people's feelings by sharing ours. I always think we can be honest and open, but that delivery is really important. Mm, that's key. <laughs> yeah. Thinking about how are you doing it, right? So like my dishes example, right? If a person's not doing dishes the way that you would like them to, you know, being able to sit down and say, hey, I have this problem or I want to talk about this with you. Is that okay? Um, and being able to maybe use an I feel statement might really go a long way way in sharing your feelings. So I feel, you know, angry or upset when I see the dishes aren't done. Do you think you could help me with that? And being even more specific about what that help might look like, people are going to be a lot more receptive to that kind of statement as compared to you just keep doing this all the time. And right, that you statement doesn't open up lines of communication about feelings. And it's so interesting to hear it just in the daily life. It's a little things. So I, I, if we can figure out, identify, and geez, uh, maybe I was upset about A, but this little thing B triggered it, and now I'm really upset about A. It's not to the same degree I am about B, but I'm just blasting somebody about this little deal. Mm-hmm. And don't you just hate it when you come to your senses and say, man, I wish I had that pitch back. Uh, I, I, when you calm down uh, and you finally come around, you say, that's no big deal, mm-hmm. you know. So it's tough. It's good to identify and understand yourself. You know, being around people when you share feelings, you can't change your personality. You are who you are. So when you talk with folks and you share things, um, you're somewhat vulnerable uh, out there. And depending on how they use and share that information you told them, uh, it it can affect you coming back Mm -hmm. by way of a third party. And you say, I didn't mean that, that way, whatever. So it's very, very careful. You got to be very careful in in the audience you're in. Uh, I know with close, close friends, I would reveal more. And then, uh, you know, kind of like on a service level deal, just kind of ca- casual and cordial. And, you know, you really don't. But I want to know about people. And my personality is such that you're going to learn about me in about 10 minutes. So, I mean, that's <laughs> going to be very hard, you know, mm-hmm. vulnerable. But, you know, I can't change my personality. Mm-hmm. So, it's you understand it. Understand the risk that you take when you come out there. And I think it helps to find friendships down the road. Mm -hmm. You tend to get closer with certain people. You need somebody to talk to. You have to have someone. You've got to have Mm -hmm. a confidant. Uh, Even on the bad things, someone Mm -hmm. to talk to, to work your way through. Mm -hmm. So um, let me ask you this, Christy. um, How important is it with being honest with oneself? I think it starts right there. Mm -hmm. Are you being honest with yourself on how you feel? Are you rationalizing or or coming up with a a fake news Mm -hmm. just to kind of get you through the day or whatever? How, Mm -hmm. How is important is to be honest with yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think that goes back to what I had said before, too, right, that we need to take that time and and kind of try to sort through that, you know, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? You know, and and how is that impacting me? And And we do need to be honest with ourselves about those things. How does life experiences um, uh, shape your feelings? Well, I think, you know, I think about, you know, as far as like young children versus older children, young adults, adults, right, that we go through different developmental stages when it comes to understanding feelings, when it comes to being able to identify kind of why we're having them and to know what to do about them, right? So if we think about young children, we think about how they get upset frequently, right? That is a part of them learning 
their feelings and how to express them. And how many times have we experienced the the young child who is kind of throwing the fit over something really small, right? Um, it is they wanted the purple cup and you gave them the red cup, right? <laughs> it's it's the little thing, right? How does how did I not know that? <laughs> right, right. And it's but it, and again, I think it speaks to like, and that is something that we talked about, you know, for older folks too, people who have you know are not kind of in that preschool toddler age, right? And sometimes it can be like I did didn't get the red cup, right? Um, kind of a thing. And so we learn over time how to identify, how to be able to tell people how we're feeling, and then to know what to do about it, right? Hopefully, well-adjusted adults, by the time that they get to be adults, they're not throwing tantrums anymore about small things like color of cup, right? Um, but it, that so different developmental stages can really impact what this all looks like. I can handle this now because I think I'm a mature adult, but I have a life experience that I remember that still sticks with me today, and it deals around rejection. And I'll never forget this. Only happened once because I wasn't going to happen a second time. Asking someone to dance, and she says no, mm. and that's a long walk back across the dance floor with all your friends looking at you. Ah, that was awful. So now going forward. You got to make sure you got to you got to be a little more selective. You got to make sure that you know, you've made at least an intro or something like that. Or you got to know what you're doing. But that stuck with me because I think it was at the age I was at. I was, mm-hmm. I was at high school at the age, and you know, that's a funny age anyhow. And it's uh, just something that it's no big deal. I mean, but it just stayed with me forever. And whenever I get told no on something, it kind of flashes back, mm. you know, something like that. So things stay with you for a while. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're coming up on our break, so don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more of When Things Aren't Going Well, right here on 1360 AM, 94.9 FM, KSCJ. Let's face it, that happens to all of us. However, the pandemic has compounded all of our lives and activities. Even the simplest tasks seem harder. Hi, I'm Brenda Geisinger, the Chief Operating Officer at the Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Family Services is a United Way partner agency serving children and families of our community, and we're here to help. If you'd like to learn more about Family Services, please contact us via email, website, Facebook, or phone Mary Pickens. At Family Services, we change lives. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well on KSCJ. Here's Art Silva. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well. I'm Art Silva along with Brenda Geisinger and I guess Christy Spicer. We continue our discussion on knowing and sharing our feelings. Well, Christy, I saved the best for the second half of the show. And is there a difference in knowing and sharing feelings between genders? So I think it's more, we can get into stereotypes, right? And we can think about stereotypes, more feminine or more masculine stereotypes when it comes to sharing um, feelings and knowing feelings. Um, So I think that it's about stereotypes more so than it is about real differences. Because I think that men and women both, everybody has feelings. Everyone has the capacity to identify their feelings and everyone has the capacity to share their feelings. It might sound different from one person to another. Personalities make a big difference, right? But we all have the capacity regardless of our gender. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's what I would kind of think about with that. Let me ask you, Brendan, is it to talk to your girlfriends or your boy, your guy friends? I think it's more about the relationship, how you're connecting with the person versus the gender or how they identify themselves Mm -hmm. as. I think it's really how vulnerable and safe you feel in having that conversation with that particular person. Mm -hmm. That's a real good point. How vulnerable you feel before you go into this. It is a risk. It is a risk at times, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's Uh, about safety in a relationship, right? right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you know people who don't like to share their feelings or they kind of like, uh, what's it like? Uh, What's that like when you work with them or you live with them? Yeah. I mean, I think that there's always people who don't want to talk about their feelings, you know, and you had talked about an experience where you felt a feeling right. And at a young age, and then that impacts you still today. I think the same thing goes with, you know, when people have experiences of, they put their feelings out to people and if it's met well, they're more likely to do it more, right? If it's not met well, they're less likely to, to do that going forward. And so we, we learn things about sharing our feelings and what happens when we do, um, 
So I, I think that gets into that. What if you want to share your feelings and you just don't know how? Mm. Uh, what can what can we do to help that person? What can that person do to help themselves? So I, I'm kind of a big believer, I think, sometimes. And sometimes we have to rehearse things, like in our mind or with someone else that maybe feels more comfortable, right? Like if you want to go to work and share a feeling about something that's going on at work with your boss or something like that, it might be better to start with expressing that feeling with a co- close friend first and get that kind of practice in if it's something that's harder for you go to someone that you know will receive that well and maybe can also give you some feedback on how you're expressing it so that you don't maybe run into a situation where um, it's completely unexpected and our work with the kids a lot of times we also have them just journal write it down Mm -hmm. what are you you know so they can get those thoughts out on paper and not worry about the response they're going to receive Um, And just practice that and Mm -hmm. go through your head of what you're thinking. It also helps you organize your thoughts, right? right? And organize your feelings, right? Um, Gives you that ability to maybe take a step back and and look at, oh, I'm feeling this way about the situation, you know, kind of answering that, like what's leading to this maybe can help be found too by, you know, a journaling experience. Because sometimes the answers that you get back really surprise you when someone does open up to you, you thought you knew them. And they're exposing something completely new inside, but they're there to, there's a trusted placing in you. Mm-hmm. And I think when someone talks to you about that, that's a trust factor. There's your safety again uh, when they're coming back in. So I think if we kind of just look at, I need to talk to someone, there's nothing worse on the positive side of getting an A on your report card and you have nobody to tell it to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, that, that's tough. So you got to have someone, you have to be someone in that line in your life that you can share good and bad. Uh, you know, what if, um, how can I help somebody shy? We all know shy people. And you can misread a shy person. Uh, mm-hmm. You can think of being standoffish or whatever. No, they're just shy. Some mm-hmm. people are just shy. Nothing wrong with them. They're just shy. Yeah, I also think that um, you run into folks, too, who are just private, yeah, right? Private people, yeah. Private people, mm-hmm. right? It's not even about being shy. <laughs> it's just yep. they're private and they prefer not to kind of share that much with a lot of other people um and so you also have that and i think the thing i think about for those folks too is they probably need more time to build a relationship with you and if you force them that's not going to be helpful because they're going to go more and more into their like see i really can't share and i don't want to because this is uncomfortable well let me ask the both of you um in your fields um have you i'm sure you dealt with people that keep it all inside and they don't want to keep it all inside. So when they come and they talk to you, it, you get the dump. So how do you help them to get this more out and expand, expand their group? Because um, it's probably a safety deal. They feel comfortable with you. But how can we get them to share this and expand their network? Yeah, I, I think it takes time. It takes time to do those things. Um, and I think we, you know, sometimes I will help people think about how can you make connections with other people if that's something they don't have. So they don't have people that they are talking to on a regular basis. And so sometimes it is about helping them find, you know, an opportunity for social interactions. And sometimes that can be a real challenge for adults to kind of um form their groups of friends and build those relationships because so much of our time is at work and home obligations and things like that. Um, And so we talk about how do you sort of take some chances and expand um, to have some of those relationships. We talked about something. I think that's interesting. Take some chances. You got to be a little Mm -hmm. bit of a risk taker. Let's take that first step. You may be successful. You make it burn a little bit, but the willingness to do that is the first step in Mm -hmm. the right direction. I kind of want to get all around, get, go full circle around. And we need each other. People need people. If you have a mm-hmm. problem connecting or sharing, um, well, let's work on that. See somebody that can help you. But we need each other. And as times get tougher, we have to share. Not that we're going to change the world or affect politics. Our own individual lives on a small micro basis, how we interact. That makes us productive, the people around us productive, and that's the first start. Mm -hmm. So please, if you're out there and you're listening, we need each other. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, Nothing to do with your your pride. We're looking to get better and put the best team on the field. So I'll tell you, this has been a great show. And um, we're coming up on the end of our show for this week. And I want to leave you with a little humor for your mental wellness. And we'll stay with the theme of feelings. So here we go. You know, men have feelings too. 
For example, sometimes we get hungry. <laughs> okay, ladies, I know you love that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Brenda Christie, and also thanks to our listening audience. Shout out to Randy Stave and Clint Voss for their continued support of our live auctions. Randy and Clint not only share their talents with Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, they're also the nonprofit auctioneers, having helped raise millions of dollars for nonprofits in Siouxland. That's right, millions. These guys do it from the heart, and we are blessed to have them as part of the Boys and Girls Home Family Services family. Thank you very much, Randy and Clint. Stuff, Siouxland's best kept secret, located at the former Indian Hills Shopping Plaza is having a huge Christmas sale. Get in on the savings. New stuff arriving daily. Boys and Girls Home Family Service is a great place to work, and we have immediate openings. All shifts for therapists, looking for teachers, and mental health technicians. Call our HR manager at 293-4700 or visit our website. We'll be back next Saturday morning at 7 a.m. right here on 1360 AM, 94.9 FM, KSCJ, when we will discuss income challenges or when there is not enough money. Don't forget to do your homework this week. Go out and have a great laugh, and it's good for the soul. Have a super week, and may the sun shine on you. Oh, don't forget to turn those clocks back. Peace. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails. For more information on the services provided by Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, see them online at boysandgirlshomeiowa.org. Or you can call 712-293-4700 to get more information about family services, residential treatment, the Opportunity School, the Siouxland Family Center, and more. At Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, we change lives. We change lives. We change lives.